Good afternoon, good morning, good evening everybody It is Sunday, April 14th And you don't know what that means But it is time for the High Risk Wrestling Podcast I was, I've just been tired um, Haven't had the strength or energy to do anything But I'm going to bring you the podcast But first things first, check out the socials Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram and of course the 215 on Twitter I'm working on a new website sorry and today's show the ballad of Swerve Strickland the man is getting his time to shine his shot is coming as he will be taking on Samoa Joe for the AEW World Championship at Dynasty so we're going to do a look back at his career but for now you know what's next so just go on and hit my music all right so with swerve getting the title shot i thought it'd be fun to look at the next five men who should get a world title shot in aw starting with number five papa papa powerhouse powerhouse hobbs he is a talent starting out in aw dark and then rising up the ranks it's been I'm a good, good journey for him, and he's getting featured weekly now as a part of the Don Callis family. Um, I think he might have only had one title shot ever in AEW, and it's time to change that. This guy is the future of the business, and sometimes we just need a Hoss champion. Number four, Orange Cassidy. Um, No matter where you rank, put this guy, no matter where you place him with the card, he is always must watch. And he is, at this point, he's a main eventer. He doesn't have to be in the main event scene, but he has been placed in a position as one of the important um, players in AEW. And it's not a matter of if, but when he gets a title shot. Number three. Katsuyori Shibata, my guy, my guy Shibata. Um, I understand what he's there to do in AEW, but I think we got to change that. Um, he's held as the measuring stick in professional wrestling. He's now going under under the moniker the wrestler, and he's a badass. And when you go go across from him in the ring, you know it's time to bring your A game. I would love for just a quick. Maybe three, four month title run for Shibata just to really recognize what he's done for this business. Number two, Will Ospreay. Again, um, I've said it time and again, I do think the main event of All In in London will be Will Ospreay versus Swerve Strickland for the AEW World Championship. We'll get into that a little bit later with the Dynasty preview. But Will Ospreay is going to be World Champion in AEW and it's probably going to happen at all and the guy is just too good and i don't even think he's ever been the iwgp heavyweight championship with now john moxley bringing that championship over to the to AEW. now um it's going to be really really good and fun when we see will osprey get that title shot at number one surprisingly jay white yes jay white has already had a title shot but we've got to erase that bad taste of his previous title feud with mjf out of our mouths currently feuding with the acclaimed and daddy ass um a lot of people are upset that jay white has not immediately been placed in the main event scene but it's okay you just can't start there you've got to work your way up and i think we can build our way back to jay white becoming a main event player Light is bright, it's shining on our world champion Samoa Joe. He is the current AEW world champion defending the championship against Swerve Strickland, and it has been an incredible run for Samoa Joe since returning to uh, essentially Ring of Honor and joining AEW. He became the longest reigning television champion in the promotion's history. He is now the world heavyweight champion after not really having the trigger pulled on on him and there to be remember he's a multiple time nxt champion that's all great that as well and good the nxt championship has a really really great lineage minus like one or two hiccups and speed bumps but as he got to the main roster the WWE never pulled the trigger on joe every summer it felt like they would treat him as a badass treat him as this unstoppable force and never put the championship on him 
his feud with Brock Lesnar was really, really good. And again, they never pulled the trigger on him. Joe is a believable badass. He is believable in the sense that he can whoop your ass and carries himself as such. And AEW figured it out with Samoa Joe. No matter how his championship run ends, it's going to be good because Samoa Joe has pres- has now been presented as the badass and the world championship threat that he is always meant to be. We'll be right back. Whose house? Swerve's house. Yeah. Yeah. I'm enjoying these ballad uh, shows, these retrospectives, especially when big moments happen in a person's career. And right now we are looking at one Swerve Strickland, Swerve Scott, uh, Scott Strickland, Kill Shot, however you want to look at it. But let's let's talk about my man Swerve. Who is Swerve? Well, Swerve is currently wrestling in a E.W. under the name Swerve Strickland. He's going by many names as Isaiah Scott, Isaiah Strickland, Shane Strickland, Swerve Scott, Killshot. He's wrestled for a number of promotions and won titles throughout these promotions. And now he has made it to the big leagues. And that's great. Swerve is from Tacoma, Washington, was in the Army. Um, moved around and found a love for professional wrestling so he started his early career up when he was in the army reserves over here in maryland and pennsylvania swerve served in the army you know, for seven years like that's that's pretty crazy and essentially made his way to combat zone wrestling in 2012 czw was started over in blackwood new jersey right across from me here in philadelphia and he got a start there. He he wrestled against uh, Samara Del Sol. He wrestled against A.R. Fox, who he became really, really good friends with. And came across a bunch of people in CZW. Wrestled against Desmond Xavier, um, Leo Rush, Davey Richards, uh, Ricky Shane Page. It's just it's just been it was a wild ride early in early in his career. For five years, he was doing very, very well in CZW. Then he made his way to the independent, independent circuit for a good seven years almost a decade came in and evolved um he defeated matt riddle yeah that riddle for the evolved championship was infused with fabian eichner wrestled against uh cassius ono wrestled against adam cole and it was the start of something special for him then he made his debut in wx W going up against the likes of Angelico and Jack Evans. Um, ring comp, the team of Timothy Thatcher and Walter Mustache Mountain, the team of Tyler Bate and Trent Seven, the team of the leaders of the new school, Marty Scroll and Zach Sabre Jr. So he, while on the independent scene, was wrestling against some of the best wrestlers on the planet. You know these names. He took a, made a stint in AAA. Um, uh, and, and and he was in a in a in a world cruiserweight championship match. Like the independent scenes, I I truly believe is where you can get the the best work and the best skill and make the most of your career. He then made himself and worked around in other promotions, fighting guys like Dragon Lee and Flip Gordon and and Darby Allen and Pentacon Jr. and Brian Cage. Like his love for professional wrestling took him all over the world all over many many places and it benefited him greatly he made his debut in defy and over that course of seven years swerve picked up skills and and made a name for himself and built his character until we get to lucha underground lucha underground is a fabled wrestling i don't know promotion tv show however you want to call it and it was there he came up with the kill shot character so his friend ricochet yes that ricochet uh got him in into lucha underground and wrestling against ricochet who was going by prince puma 
he used his 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 stint in the army as as the basis of his character, which gave him the name Kiyosha. He wrestled under the mat under a mask. He, he aligned himself with Willie Mack and Big Rick, who we know as Ezekiel Jacks. We got to do a retrospective on um <laughs> Lucha Underground, yo. Yeah, we got to really look at Lucha Underground. Um, and they lost to uh the team of a helico son of havoc uh who is matt cross and Ivelisse for the trios championships and there after the first season of lucha underground he asked the head writer of lucha underground krista joseph yeah you know who krista joseph is um to give some background to his character and that's when the army elements the military elements started coming in he had a feud with marty martinez and who stole his dog tats and that really opened up um everything for him his story of receiving his letter from ar fox a uh, former brother in arms who kill shot left for dead in the battle created a great great feud his time in lucha underground was something special um fighting with his mask he surrendered it and to, he, he surrendered to, to, to Son of Havoc and did, identified himself as Lieutenant Jermaine Strickland. As he was leaving the temple, he apologized to Dante Fox and asked to be relieved of duty. This was one of the most brutal matches you will ever see in wrestling history. The Ultima Lucha Tres Part 1 in a Hell of War match was absolutely crazy. He exited Lucha Underground after that. He then spent two years in major league wrestling um and mlw i like and once again he came across matt riddle he came across Loki and sammy callahan um and this was this was good this was major league wrestling started really having a tv deal and really having a good good roster but it was it was t it was only a, a a short period a brief period for Swerve Strickland over there in Lucha Underground um, and then in Major League Wrestling. But things changed when he joined the WWE. He joined NXT. It was under the name Isaiah Swerve Scott. And he was in the breakout tournament wrestling against many, many guys. He then was a part of the cruiser weight championship division, um, wrestling in guys like Drew Gulak, Travis Banks, Jordan Devlin, and Andrew Garter. Jordan Devlin is JD McDonough, and Travis Banks is well Travis Banks. Um, but he was unsuccessful in capturing the gold. He then took part in the new cruiserweight champion tournament representing it was like a, a block version and he was in the same block as akira Tozawa and gentleman jack gallagher he was only able he was able to defeat el Hijo del fantasma who had also worked for lucha underground and who is el Hijo del fantasma that would be one of santos escobar so yes we got to do a really got to do a retrospective on lucha underground y'all just the people that were in that promotion um and he didn't advance to the finals and he began feuding with escobar um and just couldn't he just couldn't get he couldn't get the gold and something changed something something changed right so he started a group hit row and in that group, AJ Francis inter interfered on his behalf, who was now going by Top Dollar, to Hootie Mouse, who was now going by Ashanti Theodonis, and Brianna Brandy, who was going by BFAB. Hit Row. And with the help of Hit Row, he defeated Bronson Reed to become the North American champion, his first title in the WWE. And we're thinking, okay, this is good. We got a nice little faction here that are special, that look good, got the look, got the feel. I'm proud. And then they were called up to the main roster. 
I'm like, okay, cool. Hit Rose on the main roster. And he retained the North American Championship only to lose it to Melo. That's cool. When they got caught up to the main roster, B-Fab got released. And then he was released. So the prospective leader of this faction was gone because he who must not be named thought that Top Dollar should be the leader and that Swerve and Ashanti should be the tag team, which again made no sense because Swerve was clearly the veteran of the group and had the experience to lead. And now I understand why Swerve did not want to go back. What do you mean didn't want to go back? Well, he spent some time on the independent scene and then had a quick match in New Japan wrestling against Jay White. And then he joined AEW. And before we get to his AEW career, when he joined AEW, he was putting in good work. And... A certain someone called him while he was under contract and asked, hey, you want to come back? And the answer was an emphatic no, because I don't like how you all treat me and your company. And I get that. You stand up for yourself. You stand up for what you believe in, what you think is right. So he joins AEW. Does a little bit of stuff here, does a little bit of stuff there, and then forms a tag team with Keith Lee. And they call themselves Swerve in Our Glory. And these two dudes become a great, fun tag team, feuding with Team Taz, and then winning the tag team championships after having a fantastic fantastic match with the acclaim and it's sometimes you got to pull the trigger and say yo we gotta put the belts on these guys were so so over but the thing is swerve wanted to cheat the one he wanted to get w's by any means necessary and you listen I, I can get behind that keith lee didn't want to do that so Essentially, they split. We also never got the final match between these two. We just it just never happened between Keith Lee and Swerve. So that was Swerve in our glory. And then he creates the Mogul Embassy. The first version of this uh, faction was absolute trash because the people he chose were trash. Um, then they merged with the Embassy and got rid of the trash, and they became the Mogul embassy because he started out as the mogul affiliates with rick ross huh and then once they joined with the embassy and becoming the mogul embassy they became a much better team so now you have the gates of agony tag team you have brian cage you have swerve you have prince nana you got rick ross that's that's hot and now he's building a name for himself he's feuding with the likes of darby Allen and sting with the history that they have he helps turn ar fox heel um has a tag match at all in the biggest wrestling show of all time um and his career is taking off but now it's time to flip that switch and swerve fuse with hangman adam page it's not personal swerve just wants hangman's spot again it ain't personal he wants the same opportunities that have been afforded to hangman and swerve wants to become the first black AEW world champion they mock page and they have this epic few three matches and sorry the first two matches were just something else they wrestle at Russell Dream and have a fantastic match 
they lose um, to the elite at Grand Slam. And they have a contract match. They have a contract. Sign it. They then have their Texas death match. Beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful work. And 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 there we see it with Swerve. There we see the guy. We see Shane Strickland. We see Isaiah Scott. We see we see Kill Shot. And it's, he puts it all together. Not to mention Prince Nana dancing his dumb ass on the side. And it's all coming together for Swerve. He enters the Continental Classic and finishes near the top, but doesn't win as he loses in the Triple Threat match at the tournament finals. He then has a nice little fun little thing with um, Dustin Rhodes. And now it's time for him to come for the world championship. So once again, here is Hangman Page putting himself in somebody else's business. Now, yes, Swerve did invade Hangman's house. That is true. But Hangman has said, yo, I will make sure you do not win the world championship. They have a one-on-one match. It ends in a draw. Then they go to a three match at uh, what pay-per-view was that? I don't know, what paper was that? Joe won the match. I know Joe. It was at Revolution. It was at Revolution. Joe won the match. Because Joe is Joe. And we got a face turn. Swerve turn face. And he defeats Takeshi to become the number one contender to face Samoa Joe at Dynasty. Now watch. Takeshi, Takeshi was also another person who was... Uh, at the top of the ranking so it made sense these two to have a number to this match so here we are Swerve Strickland getting ready to possibly win gold whose house it's probably going to become Swerve's house sooner than we think this is how you build a star and his wrestling career comes second to none. Yes, there probably should be some more should be some more world championships in his resume right now. And I remember doing someone else's wrestling show and asked me we were, they were going through you know uh, black wrestlers. You know who would you build your company around? And the moment we got to Swerve, there was no one else. Swerve can do everything. I've seen Swerve in tag teams. I've seen Swerve as a singer star. I've seen Swerve in a mask. I've seen Swerve as a face, as a heel, do comedy, do everything. Swerve is perfect. It's about to be his house. I am ready for it. Are you? That's our show. I know it's a little short today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, what we got coming up this week, we got part one of our listing of worst nxt call-ups we got a flashback friday since i didn't do one last week we've got aw dynasty preview this uh saturday we've got what just happened um the following monday we got some wrestling reddit content i'm falling back from wrestling or or wrestling because they are just really piling on the aw hate it's not not good and um come back for the recap every single sunday but that is our show Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Check out the social charismatic creations on Facebook and YouTube. Charismatic underscore creations 52 on Instagram. And of course, the 215 on Twitter. And as always, GD Dolan, Bailey, Isla Dawn, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, and Anna J. Holla at your boy. Peace. Mm-hmm.